These days, bush food flavours are on the menus, fancy restaurants everywhere. They're also in the spice hole of your local supermarket. But if you're anything like me, why not have a crack? Grow on your own. Loads of bush foods can be grown in containers. And now, there are plenty available. And if you can, stock up on plants from an Indigenous owned and run nursery. I'm going to be combining a few favourite flavours in one big pot. I'm using a plastic pot that's a decent size to give the plants room to grow. Now, you want something at least 40 centimetres across. Now, this one I've got, 50 centimetres. It's perfect. I can then place this pot into this slightly larger, much nicer looking container and it'll look great by the back door near the kitchen. Now with a pot like this, when it comes time to refresh the mix down the track, it's also easy to lift it out of this beautiful looking pot. And in here, I've got good quality potting mix that drains freely, but also holds moisture and nutrients. For some natives like Grevilleas and Banksias, it's important to use a low phosphorus native mix. But with the species I'm planting, any premium mix will do. The feature plant, first into the pot, I'm going with a favourite, it's a 10 out of 10, I reckon. This is cinnamon myrtle, Bacchausia myrtifolia. Now it's closely related to this classic, lemon myrtle, a medicinal and bush food plant. And a few leaves of this in hot water makes for a great cup of tea. That's a damn fine tea. Cinnamon myrtle tea is also a winner. Now, if I pluck off a leaf here, crushing or rubbing the leaves, they give off a spicy, cinnamony, almost nutmeg fragrance. And it's the leaves we're after for cooking. Not so much these gorgeous star-shaped clusters of cream flowers, although they are pretty, and I'm sure you could win a bake-off with a cake decorated with myrtle flowers. It's all about the leaf. These fragrant myrtles are small, compact trees from subtropical rainforests along the east coast. They like morning sunshine, but not the baking hot afternoon sun. Save the baking for the kitchen. Infuse the flavour into cakes, and you can even add some leaves to your next curry. Now, I'm planting this beauty in the centre. This is going to be my feature tree. Now, we'll get to a decent size in here, but it'll be quite happy in this large pot. And it will look absolutely stunning. Now, when you're harvesting, be sure to snip to a node. Now, that way you'll continually flush out new growth and you'll get a whole lot more leaves next time around. So, right here is where we're looking for. Next into the pot is Astromyrtus. Now, these are also part of the myrtle mob. They're a close cousin to cinnamon and lemon myrtle. And they have a beautiful, delicate white flowers. But what I'm after here is when the flowers become the sweet, edible fruit. They're midgenberries. They are so delicious. They're a beautiful cross between the cinnamon, blueberry, sherbet, sweet. Oh, they're unreal. Ostromyrtus are versatile shrubs, and there are a few species to choose from. I'm planting Astromyrtus dulcis. There's also a species Astromyrtus tenuifolia, which is slightly taller. The other plant I'm putting in here is a hybrid of the two, copper tops, which has reddish, rust-coloured new growth. I'm also going with No Fuss Appleberry. Now, they will grow in a range of climates. The fruits are tubular and they're ripe when they're yellow and they can have a flavour I can only describe as a little bit like a kiwi fruit or a stewed apple. And they do have a seed inside, so watch out for that as well. They're scrambling climbers, and I'm going to run with that attribute. They can spill over the sides of the pot to make the most of this vertical real estate. There we go. And for a pop of purple in salads, I'm adding a patch of native violet. With some of the best flavours in the one pot, you'll be feasting on the fruits and foliage of your labour in next to no time.